Hi everyone, here is a math problem that is sent to us by one of our followers. And this is a good problem to practice our knowledge of the laws of exponents. So what is the value of 100 raised to 200 over 200 raised to 100? And calculators are not allowed. You can pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to this exponent problem. Now let's solve this problem together. Let's begin by splitting this 200 as 2 times 100. And of course, the numerator is 1 times 100. Now let's recall the power of a product property of exponent. If you have the product a times b raised to m, that is equal to the first factor raised to the exponent and the second factor raised to the same exponent. So in here, we can therefore write this as 1 raised to 200 times 100 raised to 200 and do the same thing for the denominator. So here is the result. Then we can group this together like this. And we can now split this into two fractions. Now look at this 1 raised to 200, that is equal to 1. And then look at this part. There is a common base 100, and the operation is division. So using the quotient rule of exponent, we can just copy the common base and subtract the exponents 200 minus 100, and this is now what we got. Then simplifying 200 minus 100 is 100, so we have 100 raised to 100, and then multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators, and simplify... Now at this point, notice that we have a common exponent 100, and so we can apply this property. We have two different bases, but the exponents are the same. We can write this as one fraction, a over b, all raised to the common exponent. So we now have 100 over 2 raised to the common exponent 100, which is equal to 50 raised to 100. And this is now our final answer. Hi guys, here's our math problem for today. This is taken from the 2018 American Math Contest for middle school students. Here's the problem. How many perfect cubes lie between 2 to the 8 plus 1 and 2 to the 18 plus 1 inclusive? You can pause the video and check if you can answer this question. Now let's solve this problem together. What we want to find is the number of perfect cubes that lie between this lower boundary up to this upper boundary inclusive. So let's begin with the lower boundary. A quick calculation would show that 2 to the 8 is equal to 256 and we copy plus 1. And so this is equal to 257. Now let's look at what are the perfect cubes that are close to 257. Notice that 6 to the 3rd is equal to 216 and 7 to the 3rd is equal to 343. So clearly 257 is between 216 and 343. And so we now say that 6 cube is less than 257 which is also less than 7 cube. We are particularly interested with this 7 cube because this is the nearest perfect cube that is slightly greater than 257, which is our lower boundary. Now let's put this aside. We are going to go back to this later on. Let's look at the upper boundary, 2 to the 18 plus 1. This 2 to the 18 can also be written as the quantity 2 to the 6th raised to the 3rd. The reason is the converse of the power of power law of the exponent. Now, 2 to the 6th can be evaluated as 64, we copy exponent 3, and we add 1. This is already in cubic form, which is what we want to find in this problem. Now, let's go back to our previous result. Let's concentrate on this inequality, 257, which is equal to 2 to the 8 plus 1, that is less than 7 to the 3rd. And then in here, 2 to the 18 plus 1 is equal to 64 cubed plus 1. If we remove this plus 1, then 64 cubed must be a little lower than 2 to the 18 plus 1. But if you take 65 to the 3rd, that is already greater than 2 to the 18 plus 1. So these are exactly the numbers that we are interested in. These are perfect cubes that lie between 2 to the 8 plus 1 and 2 to the 18 plus 1. So our task now, therefore, is just to count how many of these perfect cubes are there all in all. So we can just expand this and inspect all those perfect cubes between these two boundaries. And the faster way to count the number of perfect cubes in between these two boundaries is just to subtract 64 minus 7. But we need to add 1. Why is that so? Notice that if I want to count the number of numbers between 1 and 2, there are two of them, 1 and 2. But if I subtract, 2 minus 1 is only 1. Clearly, we are not counting it correctly. We have to add 
one more so that we can get the exact number of numbers between one and two. That is the reason why we also have to add this one because we are undercounting when we just subtract 64 minus 7. Because when we count, we start with 1. So adding and subtracting now from left to right, we have 64 minus 7 plus 1 equals 58. There are a total of 58 perfect cubes in between 2 to the 8 plus 1 and 2 to the 8 and plus 1 inclusive. And this problem is now solved. So thank you very much and we hope to see you again in our next video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Math Avenue, and our Facebook page at Assistant and German Academy.